Welcome. It's good to have you here. Uh, you'll see on your screen, you've reached the Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education Informational Webinar on the upcoming Professional Certificate in Product Management. Uh, we have here with us on the line the program faculty member, uh, Professor Mohan Sani, I'll be introducing in just a moment, is going to take us through this professional certificate and give us some insights into what you'll be learning, what some of those key takeaways are. We're also going to be talking about how you will be learning. So how is this program developed to ensure that you have the very best learning experience and the very best career outcomes. So we're going to be talking about both of those things today, what you will be learning and how it is delivered. Uh, first and foremost, I want to introduce to you today's keynote speaker, Professor Mohan Birsani. We're very pleased and honored to have you with us, uh, Mohan. He is the Associate Dean of Digital Innovation as well as the McCormick Foundation Chair of Technology and a Clinical Professor of Marketing and the Director of the Center for Research in Technology and Innovation at Northwestern Kellogg. Uh, Professor Sani, would you like to jump in and say hello today? Uh, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the webinar. Really looking forward to telling you all about this exciting and deep and comprehensive program that we've created for you. So uh, after Marie describes uh, sort of the positioning of the program, who is it for? I'll take you through what you can expect to learn in this comprehensive 20 module program. Okay, so I'll be with you soon. Thank you, Professor Sani. And as you mentioned, it's a comprehensive program, a lot to cover here today. Um, so as Professor Sani said, let's set the stage here. Uh, the, you're joining a broader community here, this ecosystem of learning at Kellogg Executive Education. Uh, so we wanted to uh, start the show here by telling you a little bit about what you can expect from a Kellogg online learning experience. Uh, firstly, you'll be learning from some of the same marketing thought leaders who teach in the MBA program. So we're going to introduce you to your course faculty in a moment. Uh, these are the faculty who teach there at Kellogg Executive Education. So as you think about um, what, you can, what you can expect from a Kellogg education, we're really breaking down barriers of access to the incredible wealth of knowledge housed within Kellogg faculty. You're going to see that today as you learn from Professor Sani. Um, and we've done that here through a comprehensive program. This is 20 modules. This covers all aspects end to end of product management and product marketing. We're going to talk about real world applications so that you can take your learning to a place of action in real time as you make your way across these 20 modules. Uh, you, you'll be culminating in a capstone project with some exciting news to share on that. So stay tuned for more. There's a wide range of case studies as you examine how these components and concepts um, come to life in various industries, various sectors, and various geographies. So we're going to explore a wide range of case studies and company examples. And then finally, hands-on certifications for product management tools and software, your course leaders, your program faculty, guest speakers, a lot of interaction and engagement, while also having a high level of convenience. So we're going to show that uh, to you here as we make our way through the program. Um, when we designed this program, we really had professionals in mind who want to formalize their training in product management roles. So this, certif this certificate is going to give you that broad perspective of learning, but it's also going to help you dive deeply into many of the skills that are going to help you stand out to employers. So if you're switching careers or if you're looking to springboard into a career advancement opportunity within your current organization, this program is designed to help you to do just that. So if you're an early career professional, if you're switching careers, um, if you're making a lateral career move from an adjacent field, uh, this program is is right for you. Uh, so let's march forward. I'm going to hand the spotlight over now to Professor Sani. He's going to give you a little bit more detail here. Um, we wanted to describe for you as we talk about uh, thought leadership um, and the incredible wealth of knowledge housed within Kellogg faculty. This is what we mean here. Here's some uh, high touch point uh, bio details on Professor Sani. You'll see he's a global scholar, teacher, consultant, and speaker in business innovation, modern marketing, and enterprise analytics. He's published seven books, and the most recent, The Sentient Enterprise, was on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. 
He consults with several top name companies such as Microsoft, Salesforce, Facebook, Sony, and many others here. And he serves on the advisory boards of 12 tech startups in the US, India, Hong Kong, and Israel. So if you're looking for that global interdisciplinary perspective, uh, that's what you have here in learning directly from Professor Mohan Sani. Uh, so pleased to have you with us, Mohan. I'm gonna hand the spotlight over to you for the program overview. Thanks again for being here today. Thank you, Mary, for that wonderful overview. And again, my words of welcome uh, I, from Evanston. Uh, thanks for joining us. There are uh, people from, the, from all over the world, uh, which we are glad to see. So, uh, you know, when, when I started to design this program, uh, I realized that, you know, what we wanted to do was to build a very comprehensive end-to-end, -end, deep and broad, program that would really give you everything you needed to either transition into product management as a career or to get ahead as a product manager. So in doing that, I realized that, you know, now of course I spend a lot of time thinking about product management, building products, by the way, I, you know, just if you look at online executive programs like this program as a product, I have built seven such programs in the past three years. So I've launched seven products and, and these have reached, you know, over 12,000 students. So, you know, so I can say that, you know, I've done product development myself. I've built simulation games. Uh, there's a simulation game called Digistrat that I built, which is on the Harvard uh, uh, website. You can find it. And that's 30,000 lines of code. So it's a pretty se serious software product. So that's something that you know I live, eat, and breathe every day. Work with startup companies, work with the you know big tech companies. So a lot of the training that Microsoft does, I, I, I've been training their marketing folks, product marketing folks for twenty years. Um, of Salesforce, the entire organization, um, I've been training them in product leadership and product management. And in fact, I have a, a you know a team that I'll be working with today. This morning, I was working with a team from Infosys in India, working on their sort of AI-led product development. So, uh, so literally, this is something that I'm immersed in. But at the same time, I realized that it takes a village to build a product, like, a program like this, right? You need people who have deep expertise in specific areas. So what we did is we brought on board, besides me, you know, uh, by, by the way, several of the modules um, you know, are, are, are what I've created and what you'll be experiencing, a lot of the content, but there is specialized content that's gonna come from three other instructors. Um, and, and the first is, first is uh, Steven Benario. And Steven is a, you know, he's a product manager at Palo Alto Networks, which is a cybersecurity business. He's got a great uh, uh, experience with a whole bunch of companies, you know, startup companies, big companies, Pivotal Labs, Microsoft, AOL, and so on. Um, and uh, and he, he actually has a lot of experience teaching product managers in a wide variety of settings. So uh, so he's going to be taking us through some of the analytics uh, components because we find that you know AI, machine learning, data analytics is a very important survival skill for product managers. So so we're going to go deep into those domains with Stephen. The other area that I find that is very very important in in, in and you need in depth exposure as a PM is design thinking, you know, UI, UX, user interface design, user experience design. So we brought on board Tamara, uh, who's an expert in UI, UX, and, and she actually is a design lead for IDEO. IDEO is the world's most respected design company, right? So she's, um, uh, and, and, and she's got extensive experience in design and, uh, and she's on management consulting, she's on private equity and so on. So she's, uh, She's going to be taking you through the module on design thinking and UI UX. And the third area that I thought you needed a real deep dive was agile, understanding agile and how agile works uh, and the nuts and bolts of how you run uh, agile teams uh, through processes or program management approaches like Scrum and Kanban and so on. So we brought on both Tammy Rice. Tammy and I worked together for several years, but she's, a, she's, she's got you know, 15 plus years of experience working startups, enterprise companies, nonprofits uh, on product strategy. So she's uh, actually uh, does a lot of coaching. She does a lot of teaching. And uh, what she will be taking you through is the module on agile. So 
overall, I'm like the quarterback to use a football, American football analogy. I'm going to be anchoring the course, a lot of the content and the architecture I've created. But then you'll also be having experts do a deep dive on the specifics. All right, so over to discussing what you can expect to learn in this, uh, in this program. So at a high level, you know, if you really think about what a product manager does, this is the way I think about it, right? Product manager is kind of like a conductor of an orchestra. So when you go see an orchestra, you'll see that the conductor actually doesn't seem to play any instrument and they don't sing, but yet they are the most important person in that orchestra because they make sure that all the instruments and all the musicians are on the same page and are creating wonderful music, right? Same thing a product manager does, that they want to create, they, they, that they orchestrate. In fact, we use this word orchestrate, the work of wide variety of functional areas that get involved in bringing a product to life and taking a product to market, marketing, sales, engineering, you know, uh, manufacturing, supply chain, UI, UX, operations, legal, finance, business development, all these folks get involved in bringing a product to, to life. And you as the product manager will be the center of that wheel. And that center of that wheel is, is not only orchestration, but you're also the advocate for the customer. You are the expert on what the customer's problem is, what are the jobs you need to get done. So what you will learn in this program to do this orchestration, to do this customer advocacy, is that we're going to take you through the end-to-end -end process, cradle to grave, discovering, designing, developing, delivering, and then managing products over their life cycle. This course is program is a combination of strategy and implementation. So you'll be taught strategic thinking concepts like product strategy, product planning, portfolio, man, ma, uh, portfolio management, product road mapping, but you'll also get into the weeds, into the tactical details, how do you actually do wireframing? How do you actually do A-B testing? You know, how do you do uh, build a prototype? So you'll get into the tactical details along with the accompanying certifications. And these certifications include, you know, experimentation, A-B testing, like uh, uh, optimizely, wireframing tools like Balsamic, and analytics tools like Google Analytics. So these are, you'll actually have to gain these certifications as part of the qualifications uh, in order to get the certificate for this program, right? Uh, but it's not just about you know hard skills. It's not just about process management. It's not just about you know on you know doing using software tools. Product management is also about soft skills. It's about communication. It is about negotiation. It is about the art of influence without authority. So you'll also be learning how to communicate and articulate and present your point of view to your colleagues. Uh, and, and then finally, you will also apply these ideas and frameworks to build a start to finish go-to-market plan for one of the scenarios that we'll give you. We have created several scenarios uh, and you can choose one of those to take through for your capstone assignment. So that is basically the, 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 the overall idea. Now let me take you through the modules. We will begin by setting the stage in module one and what is product management, right? What is a product man? What is product strategy? Why do we need product strategy? You know, what, what types of firms actually have product management functions? What does the PM actually do? And how does the product management role vary? If you're a startup company big, or an established company, you're a B2B company versus a B2C company, you're a consumer package goods company versus a technology company. So the different, you know, uh, contexts and flavors of product management uh, you know, we'll talk about why products matter, what's the product vision, what's the product mission, what's the product strategy. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, and this sort of tool that I like from Salesforce, a company I work with very closely, or the V2 mom, right, which is vision, values, methods, obstacles, and metrics. So what does that V2 mom look like? How is a simple framework for understanding kind of what is, you know, translating your vision and strategy into action. And then we'll conclude by saying what makes what 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 does awesomeness look like, right? What is what makes an awesome product manager a successful product manager? So this is sort of setting the stage. The next module, very quickly, we will go into customer understanding and customer insights because you cannot do product management, you cannot bring any product to life without understanding customers. 
So customer insights, we'll talk about insights. Uh, what is the nature of customer insights? How do you source customer insights? What are the different tools you can use to generate customer insights from ethnography to customer experience mapping to customer advisory boards to you know to customer visit programs to product telemetry to to human factors research a wide variety of tools that you're going to learn to generate customer insights uh, and then we're going to talk about how you take these insights and convert them into action how do you put them into into action and how do you drive product innovation with those customer insights right? Uh, by the way, as you're doing your capstone assignment, you will be doing different aspects of the uh, work in the capstone alongside these modules. So for instance, you will start doing the customer insights work for your project when you do the customer insights module. In module three, we will talk about opportunities. All products begin as opportunities. It's sort of like, maybe there's a hypothesis. If we, you know, it's kind of like the field of dreams statement. If we build this, they may come, right? So we need to hypothesize an opportunity. So we learn how to define a product opportunity as an intersection of three things, desirability, feasibility, and viability. We'll look at a framework called the real win worth framework to assess opportunities. Is it real? Can we win? Is it worth it? So the product company fit, the product market fit, and the product business fit. And then we'll, we'll go deep into the framework that I really like, uh, and that is the jobs to be done framework, and which anchors on uh, finding opportunities by understanding what is the job that we're trying to do? What is the problem we're trying to solve for our customers, right? So that is kind of the so that's the opportunity identification. By the way, opportunity identification and analysis is all about the problem space. It's understanding customer problems, understanding sort of you know the jobs to be done, understanding sort of what is it that, that, that they need to get done. But then what we need to do once we understand the problem is go to the solution, right? So that is what we call discovery. So then the next module, we're gonna focus on product discovery. So product discovery is an iterative process. It's an iterative process of learning, testing, you know, testing, learning, refining, iterating until you achieve, what is the goal? The end goal of the discovery is product market fit. That you have a product and a market and you find a fit between, a resonance between the solution that you're proposing and the problem that the customer wants solved. So that is the process of discovery, right? So, so this will be framed in terms of a discovery hypothesis. A discovery hypothesis says these, this is, we think that there is an opportunity to create a solution like this for a problem like this. By the way, the discovery hypothesis includes the opportunity hypothesis, but the opportunity hypothesis is a problem hypothesis. The discovery hypothesis includes a solution hypothesis for that problem. And then what you need to do is to actually start iterating through this process to come up with what is the end goal? To come up with an MVP, a minimum viable product. So we'll talk about the MVP framework and how we get there through this iterative process. We will also talk about um, the fundamentals of how we describe the customer's problem and jobs to be done in terms of user story. User story is a very, very fundamental foundational concept in Agile. So we'll talk about what are the user stories, what is an epic, what is the theme, and what are the distinctions between these. So how do you frame all of this in terms of the customer requirements? Now, you know, one of the things that I find people don't pay enough attention to when they're building a product is how you're going to make money. How are you going to monetize? What is the business model? So it's very important for, in my opinion, to think early about the monetization framework or the business model. So we're going to talk about in module five, business model design. What are What is a business model? What are the different types of business model? What is freemium? What is SaaS? What is marketplace? What are the different, and what are the pros and cons? What is advertising as a business model? And how do you choose the right business model? And once you've chosen the business model, how do you optimize it? You know, what are the metrics you think of? So we'll, and we're gonna do a deep dive into subscription economics or SaaS math, right? So it's like, how do you evaluate the, what are the key KPIs or metrics you think about as you evaluate a subscription business? Things like MRR, CAC, CLV, churn, and you know, and cohort analysis to come up with these sort of way. So there'll be a fair bit of sort of quantitative and mathematical analysis also in this particular module. We will continue this discussion of, of business model design by talking about some of the financial tools and financial analysis that you need to do as PMs, right? 
So as pro- I find sometimes the product managers, they don't grow up in the finance world, right? They don't, they don't necessarily do a lot of finance. But, uh, but by the way, finance here doesn't mean that you start to accounting, that you start to read balance sheets. No, it's really about understanding the product economics, product profitability. So for example, how do you evaluate the viability and the economics of a SaaS business? How do you build a spreadsheet model for a SaaS business? How do you analyze your project, right? So project in terms of, so let's say you're doing a product development project, you need to invest in it. So what's the net present value? What is the internal rate of return? The NPV, IRR, discounted cash flow. So we'll look at how you do project economics. We'll also look at sort of how you assess the profitability of product lines, things like product cannibalization calculations and product lines. So if you're, if you have, let's say you have two models of the iPhone and you launch a third, how do you look at the the sales of the third model and deconstruct that into how much came from cannibalization, how much came from demand expansion, how much came from competitive draw. It's very important for you to be able to do that product line profitability analysis. So this will be your sort of math module where we'll dig deeper into the financial analysis. All right, turning to a very different frame, uh, 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 skill. Uh, when you start to build a product, you also need to think about the user experience and the user interface. This is what we call UI UX. So here you'll learn the fundamentals of what, what do you mean by user experience? What is conceptual design? What is interaction design? What is virtual design? What does the design sprint look like? Um, and this is where you're going to actually start to use tools. Like you're going to use wireframing too. The wireframing is a very simple way to, artic- to, to, to show a prototype or a markup to a customer. And wireframing tools like Balsamic and Figma are tools where you can actually construct these, these wireframes very, very quickly. So you're going to actually do an exercise on wireframing. Uh, in module eight, we'll, we'll go get into the process of product development. And this is where we'll talk about agile. Agile is a methodology that is now becoming kind of a very popular, in fact, the de facto way in which software is developed. So I work with Microsoft very closely and Microsoft many, several years ago, entirely switched to agile. So now the entire company's development organization is on a three week sprint. So they, they do a three week sprint and they started every third Tuesday. Uh, so what is agile? How is it different from waterfall, which is the conventional approach to product development? What are the different agile methodologies, you know, Scrum, Kanban, and how do you actually build scaled agile for, how do you scale agile for a large organization? So there's this, uh, there's this uh, framework called the scale agile framework or SAFE. Uh, so we'll, we'll dig into the details of this. So what are the components of Agile or the principles of Agile? And then get into the details of you know, specific Agile methodologies like Scrum uh, and so on. Right? By the way, this is what Tammy will teach you. In the ninth module, we'll talk about product planning. Because, okay, you, you've thought about the product and you've brought it to market, but then you need, you've launched a product, but then you need to improve the product. Right? You need to think about what's next, what's in the next version, what comes next. So that is the idea of road mapping and product planning. So this is the, the, the notion that we're going to think about how you build a product plan that consists of these multiple releases. And how do you think about these releases in terms of themes, not just features, in terms of sort of coherent you know, uh, 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 themes that you can articulate and how sort of this product planning and product road mapping links your business strategy to your product strategy. So this is where we'll talk about product roadmaps, product portfolios, and how to use road mapping tools, you know, like Jira, Trello, and so on. Uh, in the 10th module, we will talk about an element that is very important as you develop products, and that is building a prototype. Prototype is basically used to test a hypothesis. It's used to test a hypothesis of demand. And a prototype should be as lightweight as possible, as lean as possible, as cheap as possible, as quick as possible, and should be designed to test the focal hypothesis and nothing more, right? So we'll learn about the importance of prototyping, the concept of prototyping, the important and why it is important. We'll distinguish between the different types of prototypes. You know, what's the difference between an alpha and a beta and a pilot? And, uh, and, and what are the different artifacts that you can create like wireframing, using 3D printing to build you know, uh, models of hardware products or physical products, and uh, what are some of the best practices in prototyping. In the 11th module, we will make a distinction. By the way, modules one to 10, the first half of the program are focused on bringing a product to life, right? So all the way from opportunities to a, product that is ready for the market.
In the second half of the program, module 10 onward, 11 onwards, we get into the product marketing aspects of product management. So product management is both inbound and outbound. Inbound is how do you bring a product to life, work with engineering and your development team. And the outbound is how do you then work with your marketing and sales organization to take the product to market and make it successful and ensure customer success. We will begin that journey in the second half of the program in module 11. We'll talk about taking products to market. You'll hear a common term very commonly used by technology companies, GTM strategy, go-to-market strategy. So we're going to learn about go-to-market strategies, seven elements of the GTM strategy, and including you know, the product positioning, the messaging, the value proposition, the channels, the routes to market, the marketing communication plan, uh, the readiness planning, the collateral that you need to create, the also the internal readiness and the partner readiness and, and so on. So we'll look at the entire set of th things you need to think about in order to take a product to market uh, and, uh, and make sure that it's successful. In module 12, we will also talk about a skill that's important for product marketers. By the way, it's a skill that's important for every product manager, and that's business communication. So this is a module that I built, you know, really from the ground up. I asked myself, what is it that, that product managers need to be able to do well in terms of communication? So I said, okay, well, product management requires storytelling because you're telling the story of your product. By the way, today, what am I doing? I'm telling you the story of this program. I'm a storyteller. I'm giving you the narrative. I'm trying to excite you that this is what you can learn. Same thing you need to do as a product manager. You need to pitch, right? You need to actually pitch your... So, so we'll talk about the fundamental of storytelling. How do you give effective? And then how do you look at the different scenarios? So one scenario very commonly is you'll make a product presentation. You'll make a product pitch. In another case, it might be that you're in a meeting with your engineering colleagues and you're trying to communicate the roadmap to them. So there's internal stakeholders and external stakeholders, right? So there's a skills that you need to do product presentations and demos to customers, but you need a very different set of skills to communicate effectively with your engineering and with development colleagues. You need a different kind of scenario and skills to communicate to executive management when you're trying to get buy-in, trying to get resources. So we'll, we'll learn about all of these scenarios. How do you communicate effectively? How do you manage meetings effectively? How do you deal with difficult situations in the context of uh, communication. In module 13, we're going to make the observation that, you know, you don't, you don't live in a vacuum. You don't build a product in a vacuum. The partner ecosystem is absolutely critical, particularly for technology companies. If you look at Salesforce or SAP or Microsoft or HP or, you know, their partner ecosystem is massive. Like look at Apple, massive partner. They call it the app economy, right? That's the entire ecosystem. So how do you manage this partner ecosystem? How do you build a whole offer? And the whole offer is everything that the customer needs, not only your product, but what else the partners need to do. So in many cases that you might be, take Microsoft as a company, they might create a platform, right? They might create Dynamics as a platform for managing your business. But then how does Dynamics work for a retailer? How does Dynamics work for a bank? How does Dynamics work for an insurance company? That is done by partners. That is done by implementation. So there are different types of partners. There are value-added resellers. There are ISVs. There are OEMs. There are, you know, there's, 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 there's just technology partners. There are platform companies. So we look at the entire ecosystem and how do you make a decision on should I partner or should I make this thing myself? How do I make the make buyer ally decisions? So this is the whole ecosystems and platform discussion we're going to have. In module 14, we'll make the observation that a product is not just at, built at a point in time. Once you launch a product, you need to ensure that it continues to grow, that it continues to evolve. So for that, you need to evolve the product. You also need to develop customers, right? Customer development and market development. So we'll look at product evolution. We'll look at the evolution of customer. How do you go deeper into a customer account? How do you drive growth? Uh, you know, how do you actually use growth hacking techniques to find new growth opportunities? And, uh, and how do you build line extensions, next version? And also, by the way, how do you kill products? How do you do sunsetting and pruning when you've done, you know, when your product has outlived its usefulness or, or you want to get out of a particular business? So that's, that, that's, so that's what we call sunsetting or pruning, right? So we'll discuss this entire idea of life cycle management and evolution and growth. 
in module 15 we're going to dig deeper into an aspect of growth that i'm finding a lot of you know buzz around and that is the idea of growth hacking so growth hacking is the notion that how do we creatively find ways to drive growth how do we how do we look at a particular metric where we are suffering maybe it's a customer acquisition that we've got a problem or customer activation we've got a problem or a conversion problem or we've got a retention problem so we've honed in on a specific metric that we want to improve we use creative ways uh, to sort of improve that metric and then we test and learn very quickly using a lean approach so that is the idea of growth hacking so what does that growth mindset look like what does that hacker mindset look like what are the tactics for growth hacking what are the strategies and how do you actually continue to run use experimentation and testing in a way that you continue to drive growth in module 16 we're going to take a slight detour and talk about some foundational skills that are becoming more important for 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 product managers and that is data science and data analytics now this is not meant to be an analytics program or a data science program but we believe it's really important for product managers to have a base level of literacy and understanding of data science and and analytics so we're going to talk here about the uh uh you know what are the different uh, evaluation metrics you know how do you do uh, how do you avoid analytical errors and how do you use popular platforms such as google analytics uh to analyze the performance of your products and uh, and your product marketing right so so here you'll actually go through the google analytics certification too in 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 module 17 we're going to actually continue our exploration of data science by getting into the discussion of artificial intelligence and machine learning fundamentals by the way i find ai and ml are used in two ways for product managers by product managers one is to improve the performance of their products by looking at analytics customer analytics product analytics to improve the performance but in some cases your products themselves might be ai products or machine learning products so many of the startup companies that i work with actually are building products that are ai products so for example there's a startup company that i advise based out of israel it's called law geeks all right check them out they're a fascinating company law geeks uh so what they have done is they built a, a platform for that uses natural language understanding to automatically review legal contracts it was founded by one of my former students who is a Uh, uh, an mba and a lawyer so he realized that that you know that lawyers spend a lot of time just reviewing agreements non disclosure agreements sales agreements and saas agreements and a lot of this the the agreements are fairly standard but there might be some clauses that are objectionable some gotcha that are hiding so he's built a platform to do that now if you're a product manager for that product it's an ai product so you need to understand the fundamentals of ai and machine learning so we're going to talk about the fundamental concepts um and then to think about sort of the basic ai ml platforms tools and algorithms as we come towards the end of the program we're going to conclude by talking about managing stakeholder relationships right so here we'll look at really kind of the fact that as, you know remember when i started i started by saying that a product manager you're an orchestrator you need to you need to orchestrate so, but in orchestration you need to manage stakeholders and stakeholder relationships is the focus of this for last uh, module or what are the skills that you'll need to lead a product team how do you actually manage uh, and lead effectively when you don't have authority how do you manage conflict how do you manage remote teams in a covid world so those are some of the characteristics a very very important module of uh, managing relationships and then there's a there's a 19th module where i will sort of focus on a very interesting and emerging this is a very cutting edge topic that is product management for services companies if you think what what do you mean by services companies professional services companies they may be consulting companies they may be you know uh uh marketing services companies they may be uh legal law law, law firms they may be advertising companies so there's a variety of professional services companies that are now automating parts of the processes that they Uh, that they manage i give you an example in legal processes right so this is called rpa or ipa legal process in intelligent process automation robotic process automation so we'll talk about how product management concepts are being applied in the services context very important because the services context is different you're going to use what i call embedded products and products that are embedded into a services offering so we'll talk about the principles of embedded product management and how this process is different than traditional product companies 
on the 20th module, you're going to bring together all this learning and complete your capstone project, right? By the way, a capstone project is you'll pick one out of four scenarios that we give you. Some are B2B, some are B2C. You'll pick the one that's most interesting. And you will actually create a, a comprehensive plan for your product and taking it to market. And this is something you're going to do throughout the program, but on module 20, you're going to bring it all together. And, and I have to tell you, you know, this is something that I was sharing with Marie, very exciting. Just yesterday, our first cohort, uh, I personally reviewed the presentations of the best capstone projects. It was fantastic. What a great experience. We had five people who had been selected to present out of our cohort of 60 odd people. And they were the finalists. You know what was very interesting about those five people? Three of them have had career changes or enhancements as a result of this program. That is the one has gotten promoted, one has actually gotten into product management, and the third one has multiple offers for product management jobs he's deciding between. What a great testimonial. You want to ask me what this program does for you? That's what it's about. And, and, they, and they told me that this capstone project and the learning that they had I wish I could have just shared the recording of yesterday's call. It just made me believe that what we are doing is right. What we are doing really works. Because at the end of the day, yeah, evaluations matter, NPS matters, satisfaction matters. But to me, the biggest satisfaction is, Professor, I got a job or I changed my job or I got a promotion. That's what you, this is all about, right? Now, by the way, there are several certifications that are included in the program. I've mentioned these as we've gone along. Balsamic for wireframing, optimizely for A-B testing, Google Analytics, you know, for, for customer understanding, and Miro, which is a, is a collaboration platform. So you're going to use, you learn these certifications uh, in order to, and this will be part of your learning, because we do believe that in order to be certified as a product manager, you need to be able to do certain things and use the software tools. Now, the other thing I want to emphasize is without getting into details, folks, I have worked with a wide variety of industries. You know, I, I mean, I've worked from agriculture to ad tech to finance to insurance to government to, you know, I'll be working with the army next week. Um, you know, it's just, uh, the, you name it, that there is a company, there's an industry I've worked with. And I will bring all these industry examples to bear. So please don't even ask me the question, does this apply to my industry? I'm B2B, I'm B2C. I got you. It's going to be there. You know, we've got a wide variety range of examples, and these are all companies, many of them I've personally worked with. So rest assured that regardless of sort of what industry, size of company, what context you, you work in, this will be a relevant program for you. Now, very quickly, I'm going to turn it over to Marie. To, over to you, Marie. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Sani, uh, for taking us through that content overview. In just a moment, I'm going to tell you how you can get connected with a program advisor so that you have a mentor and a place to go between now and the time the course begins. Um, but as Professor Sani said, before we turn it over to next steps, we want to talk a little bit about how you will learn. How is this course different? There's lots of options out there. What really sets this course apart? So we wanted to give you some of those details, sort of a behind the scenes look um, at what it's like in that day-to-day -day experience. Um, as I mentioned before, and as you can see on your screen here, that green tagline there, convenient and interactive learning experience. Those are the two things you can expect, that balance between a high level of convenience and a high level of interaction. So you have brief video segments. You're able to watch these on your own schedule. Uh, within each week, uh, we're estimating 15 to 20 hours per week. Uh, those 15 to 20 hours are, are by and large yours to schedule around your availability. Much of what you see in the program is asynchronous, allowing you to touch in around your schedule. So if you'd like to touch in in the mornings, in the afternoons, when the children are sleeping, on the evenings and weekends, you're able to design a schedule that works for you. Uh, but you're really looking for that 15 to 20 hours every week. It's a six-month commitment, so you're looking ahead across six months. Um, and some of those interactions include quizzes, peer discussions, opinion polls. This is all happening in the background in an asynchronous fashion, allowing you, again, to have that high level of engagement and interaction while also having that uh, convenience uh, that many of you need as full-time working professionals. 
Um, all of the assignments are geared towards practical application. So you're not just going to be doing this program aside from your other uh, responsibilities. You're going to be integrating your learning as you go throughout your day-to-day -day work. So if you're in an organization or you're looking for career advancement opportunities, we're gonna be blending those things together with your learning experience, allowing you to make real-time transformational impact both in your career and your organization. Uh, you have a teaching team that's robust. You, you, you heard about your program faculty, you heard from Professor Sani today, and he introduced his co-faculty, um, all of the thought leaders who have come together to design this program. In addition to your program faculty, uh, we have in the program uh, industry experts experts who serve as your program leaders. You can think of them as teaching fellows, if you will, um, but they're that next level teaching support. Um, these are industry experts who have been selected to come into this program and guide your day-to-day -day learning experience. So your program leaders are on with you every single day. They're giving you assignment feedback that's individualized around your learning goals. They're hosting office hours every week. So for those of you looking for more live interaction, you want to jump on and turn your video and your audio on and engage with questions and with your peers, you have that opportunity to do that throughout your time in the program, all facilitated by your industry expert program leaders. Um, they are also helping to moderate discussion boards, so they're on the discussion threads, helping to push your thinking and drive engagement. Um, again, every step of the way, ensuring that you have the very best learning experience possible. Program leaders are also able to customize your learning. So if you're interested in a certain niche area, or if you'd like more resources about a topic that you're exploring, simply go to office hours, reach out by email, connect with your program leader, and they're going to be able to help you. Uh, one of the biggest returns on your investment in this program is immediately upon entering, you're broadening out your professional network. You're gaining peers and colleagues from all across the globe who represent all different industries, all different sectors, all different years of tenure or work experience. So you have a truly diverse peer network uh, that you're now expanding in this program. The second big return on your investment here is a chance to earn a credential, a certificate of completion from Kellogg Executive Education. And this certainly will go a long way um, in helping you to springboard into those career advancement opportunities. Um, this can be posted on your LinkedIn. You can write about it on your resume, bring it with you to your job interview. And again, it helps to showcase your knowledge and expertise in product management. So you have a broadened professional network. You have a certification uh, of completion from Kellogg Executive Education. You have all of the tools and softwares that you've explored and certified throughout your time in the program as well as a strategic toolkit that you can apply again and again after this program to the work that you do in product management. Um, on the next slide, it's the last and final slide, and this is where we talk about our program advisors. Uh, they're supporting the session here in the back end. Our program advisors are the course foremost experts when it comes to all of the logistics for the program all of the course policy, and all of the registration and enrollment questions that you might have. So in the logistics category, you might be wondering, when are those live office hours scheduled? What about faculty webinars? When do they take place? Uh, what is that day-to-day -day experience like? They'll be able to help you with the course policy questions. How do I earn that certificate of completion? What's the evaluative criteria for the program? They can walk you through those details, and they can also support your registration and enrollment process if you're looking to explore payment options. Um, or simply just have support as you register and enroll in the program, they can help you through that as well. So how do you get connected with Sahil or Foysia? Uh, there's a couple of different ways. You'll see there's a QR code here on your screen. If you have a smartphone, you can hold that up to the QR code and it'll take you over to the enrollment page. There's also a link there on the slide. You cannot click on the link because we're in presentation mode. But if you open up your chat box, our, um, it's going to post here in just a moment a link that you can click on. Uh, that link will take you over to our enrollment page. Um, once you're in the enrollment page, if you click that apply now button and put in your contact details, your name, email address, and phone number, that's listed there for you in the chat as well. That's Kellogg at emeritus.org. If you want to send us an email, let us know you need an advisor. We can connect you that way. And then the third channel to getting connected with an advisor is simply to wait for today's recording to arrive in your inbox. Um, as I mentioned before, we've recorded the session and we'll be following up within 24 to 48 hours to give you copies of the recording as well as all of the slides here. So once you receive that email, simply reply all and let us know you need an advisor. A lot of ways to get connected, but the support that you receive in this program begins right here 
right now. So starting now and moving all throughout the six months, you're going to have a, a coalition of support here on um, helping to guide your experience. Uh, so we do have Professor Sani still with us. Yeah, there's a question that, uh, which is that, is there, what is the overlap of this course uh, and the product strategy course? Is there a value in doing both? But you would not do both, definitely not. It's meant for different audiences and different purposes. Uh, so the purpose of this program is to uh, is, is designed for people who are slightly kind of in their, maybe it's like a five years, so anywhere between three and seven years of experience, that's kind of the sweet spot. Not to say that, you know, uh, people who are more senior can't do this, but it's designed for people who are individual contributors and who are actually going to uh, need the certification that they can actually do all the work that's needed as a product manager, right? The product strategy program, which is an eight week program is designed for more senior people and it is and it focuses on the product strategy aspects. Um, so it is, uh, it is, so it doesn't, for instance, include the certifications. It doesn't include the capstone assignment and the hands-on work. So it's designed actually for someone who wants to lead, needs to lead product teams and is more senior. So you wouldn't do both. You, so I would say that this program is, 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 is relevant for somebody who really wants to build a career and needs the essential strategy and tactical implementation skills, as well as tools um that and, and and the product strategy program is someone who's wants to get a 360 degree view as a product leader or someone involved in product uh, and to, to and the emphasis there is on strategy and decision making they um and, and and let me relate this question to the question which is uh, will there be information supporting how to manage a product management team uh, several modules i talked about this right we talk about this in the context of agile where how do you manage and run agile teams? We'll talk about this in the context of stakeholder management, which is really looking, thinking about how you manage the relationship with different stakeholders. We'll, you'll, 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 you'll learn this in the module on communication and leadership, which we'll talk about how you actually influence people without authority, how do you articulate your point of view? So the idea of like sort of team, managing teams, managing people and communicating, influencing is embedded through several modules in the program. Um, how much industry experience is required? Um, and this is a, a good segue as well into Nikesh's question, who has 15 years of experience as a business analyst. Is this going to be the right program or the product strategy program? So as they're sort of deciding, uh, can you talk a little bit about industry experience and tenure? Yeah, you know, uh, that's 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 sort of a little bit of a complex question because um, it's you know, it, it doesn't matter in some sense how much industry experience you have or how little you have. What matters is what you want to learn in product management, product strategy, right? So um, you've got 15 years of experience in business analysts as functional lead, but it sounds like there are a lot of things that you don't know about in the context of product management. So even though you have 15 years of experience, you're relatively senior in terms of this cohort, but I think this will be a relevant program for you because it's going to actually expose you to everything you need to know in order to make a shift in your career. Right. So similarly, if, I mean, I got three years of experience and how many, how much, what is the minimum industry experience I need? It's, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I, like, I like to say, by the way, Marie, my favorite quote in hiring is I said that, that don't hire for intercept, hire for slope. Right. It's not what you know, but it's, it's what you're willing to learn and how quickly you're willing to learn. So that is sort of the idea here that there are no prerequisites needed. We will teach you from the beginning, from scratch. And conversely, even if you know a lot and I have a lot of experience, there's, I think, a lot that you can learn in the context of all the rigor and the end-to-end -end frameworks that you need in order to be successful as a product manager. So that's the evaluation you have to make. You know, how much do I value kind of this entire skill set and tool set that will enable me to be successful as a product manager as a career, right? So product ma marketing, product management as a career. So that's really kind of the dividing line. So we're at the top of the hour. I want to thank you all for spending an hour with us and in uh, making this, you know, it's a big decision, by the way. This is a big investment of time and effort. Money, yes, but time and effort. You know, this we're asking a lot, but what we promise you is you're going to get a lot out of it. 
that this is really a life changing and career altering program. And I'm confident because, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. And there are people who have gone through this program who have uh, really appreciated the learning that has come out of it. So, uh, so make this investment in yourself and I hope to see every one of you in the cohort that starts soon. So thank you very thank much you for so joining much. over to the Thank you, Professor Sani. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure hearing from you over the course. Of, um, with that, we sign off with a heartfelt good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you from around the globe. Thank you again for joining. And